I know this is supposed to be easy, but we need to talk about something that was really hard. This video, we are going to be in the new kitchen. After three years of waiting, a year of designing, and a year of building and putting together, we finally have an amalgamation of a design of my creation exactly. And I didn't know if it was ever gonna happen. And I'm here to fucking tell you that it was possible. This isn't just some kitchen set, it's a real kitchen. From top to bottom, nothing in here is fake. Solid Calcutta marble, refrigerated drawers, built-in dryager, all of the home stuff that we would need, but also all the fancy stuff. There's nothing in this kitchen that we can't do, and it was made specifically with you in mind. That means that we can make and create anything we could possibly think of, and it's all because of you, but it's also all for you. That being said, welcome. Now, back to our pizza. What if you could make the greatest homemade pizza in your life, but cut your hands on time down by 75%? Most people think the fastest way to make a pizza is to go to the store and buy a pre-made dough. That's awful. But I get it, we wanna save time. And this dough recipe has the secrets to do that. On top of that, we're making three different sauces. The first two, throw in a blender on the pizza, done. And the last one will be very quickly cooked using today's sponsor, Made In. Well, Made In Cookware. I genuinely love these pans. I've been using them for years. You've seen me use it. Got this one, it's aged, it's used. So I'm pretty Pretty stoked to be in bed with them. These are pro quality products crafted in Italy and used in multiple three Michelin star restaurants. Obviously you don't need to be a three Michelin star chef to use these. They're perfect for home cooks. These things retain heat like a mother giving you a nice even cook. Thanks to the nice five ply stainless steel material. Plus the handle's gonna stay nice and cool with a beautiful balanced weight distribution due to its ergonomic design. Check out the stainless collection and made in's other cookware by clicking the link in the description to save on your order. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? What's the problem with making pizza? You need lots of experience making doughs and you have to spend a ton of time kneading dough, putting your triceps to work until you can barely lift your arms to grab a little door handle or drink your coffee. None of those problems exist with this dough. So I don't wanna hear any complaining, respectfully. Large mixing bowl, ideally a high reflective stainless steel one so you can see all the cameras and lights we're still working on the kinks anyway to that you'll add three and a quarter cup or 500 grams of double o tipo flour oh my god he said a fancy flour look you can use all purpose it's fine follow that with three quarters of a tablespoon or 14 grams of fine sea salt mix that together lightly separately mix together one and a half cups or 375 grams of lukewarm water with a quarter teaspoon or one gram of active dry yeast mix together add the liquid to the dry mix by hand until you get a shaggy dough and well that's it anyway wrap with plastic wrap leave it room temperature overnight no kneading no slapping no kissing no nothing now, the next day, pop your dough out of the bowl onto a floured work surface, divide into four even pieces, lightly roll each piece into a ball, dust a baking sheet or proofing box with flour, add your dough balls, and cover with a lid or greased plastic wrap. That's literally it. You're ready to make pizza, except you need sauce. The horror stories of tomato sauce only being good if you simmer it down for an hour or two. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, well, there's zero cooking for this sauce. In fact, you just throw everything in a blender or food processor. Hell, you can even avoid the machines altogether if you want it. Use a got cheese grater, it's fine. Anyway, in a blender or food processor, add the tomatoes from a 28 ounce or 794 gram can of whole peeled Samarzano tomatoes, none of the juice. Save that later for soup or something. Fold that with three cloves of garlic, a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil, salt to taste, and blend on low speed until pureed and as smooth as possible. Like I said, if you don't have a blender, just use a fine cheese grater for both the garlic and the tomatoes, then mix with a spoon, that's it. Now it's time to assemble. Josh, if this is an easy pizza, how can I shape my pizza with no experience? Don't worry if the shape gets a little f***ed up. It's fine. My pizzas are rarely perfectly round, but they are always delicious. Anyway, generously season with flour, your dough, and a work surface. Pick a piece of dough up, plop down on your floured work surface. Using a fist, indent the center, leaving a very thin quarter-inch border around the edges. Now, leaving your dough on the counter, use your hands to stretch the dough in two opposing directions gently, quarter-turning the dough after each stretch until you get roughly a 10-inch circle. Sauce number one, the raw one. Add about three tablespoons of your sauce. Then using the back of a spoon, spread around your pizza in a circular motion. Top with some torn fresh mozzarella to your heart's desire, a couple basil leaves, and now pause. Of course, baking this in a proper pizza oven is the fastest and most traditional way. I'll also show you an oven method. But first, pizza oven. So fire up a pizza oven to around 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Look, you don't even need a pizza peel if you don't have one. You can use a cutting board or a large plate or a serving dish or literally anything that's flat and big enough. You know, we all have our size choices, don't we? Using a pizza peel, load your pizza in your oven, cook for 20 seconds, turn 180 degrees, then another 20 seconds, quarter turn, one more, and cook for 15 more seconds. 
seconds. Remove and you have a beautiful pizza. Now look, in a pizza oven, the basil will retain its flavor. In a regular oven, probably not. But if you are gonna use a home oven, using either an overturned baking sheet or in this case, a baking stone placed in a cold oven, preheat your oven to max temp for 30 minutes, then load in your topped pizza. Using a pizza peel or a large cutting board, bake for five to eight minutes, boom, done, look at that. Now let's taste. It's pizza time. This is the first recipe we've done in the studio. Welcome, we worked really hard on it and I hope you love it. Anyway. Oh my God. It's blocking my ability to do mental math right now. I'm starting to wonder if you need to knead pizza dough at all. This is just as good as any other pizza dough. The only difference is it's a little harder to stretch because it hasn't had as much rest time. Somehow you've got a lighter, more tender pizza crust, but it's still got that chew. I think if you serve this to most people, they would not know the difference between a fine restaurant pizza and a no need, low effort pizza. This is ridiculously easy. Actual active time on this, less than making steak and potatoes. So would it be worth it to maybe spend more time on the toppings? But let's take this further, sauce tube. Something a bit more involved and I think it might be better. And you still can do it in a blender. So to your skinny blade machine, add five cloves of garlic, a third cup or 45 grams of pine nuts, ideally toasted, one cup or 40 grams of grated Parmigiano Reggiano, two cups or 50 grams of fresh basil, a splash of water, and blend on medium high until everything begins to loosen. You may need to use a bit of extra water to get it loose, but don't add too much. As soon as it's vortexing in the blender, slowly stream in a half cup or 120 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil, transfer to a bowl, and season to taste with salt. Now now it's time to assemble the second pizza, which needed to be more special in my opinion, with more special toppings. I mean, look at this thing. So stretch out your dough ball, sauce it up with your lovely emulsified pesto. Italians, you gotta have respect for this emulsified pesto, please, okay? It's just sexy. Add some torn fresh mozzarella, spots all over the dough, top with a few slices of prosciutto in randomized spots, some sliced sun-dried tomato, pop in the pizza oven till beautifully cooked. I mean, look at this thing. And this is the piece de resistance. Listen, tear fresh burrata, squeeze and spread the stracciatella inside the burrata around the pizza, then hit that with a touch of olive oil for love and respect. A little bit of fresh cracked pep, and now we find out if this was better than pizza one. Oh yeah, now this is a little step up. The sauce is just blended, so it's not that difficult, but you know, a little more effort. God damn. This is already one of the best pizzas we've made on this channel, and it's definitely the best pizza that we've made in this kitchen. <laughs> it's so balanced, the pesto is right up front because you emulsified the sauce. It actually surprisingly stayed relatively emulsified, so you get that nice velvety finish on the sauce. I mean, the cream, oh my God. Finish it off with the burrata, but you're getting mostly the creamy stuff in there. Salty kick from the prosciutto, and then it's cut beautifully with the acidity of a sun-dried tomato. Is that how the other Italians say tomato? Pomodoro, right, because pomodoro sauce. Right, I knew that. This is embarrassing. Now we're using the same dough again on the third pizza, but we're turning the effort up just a little bit to see if it makes it even better than this one. Our grand finale. The one pizza that I imagine most people know and is the most popular American style pizza in existence. Pepperoni turned all the way up. A la spicy vodka. Cooked in papas. Made in stainless steel pan. Sponsored but genuinely loved. In a nice, beautiful, sensuous saucepan, add three ounces or 112 grams of finely diced pancetta, two tablespoons or 24 grams of extra virgin olive oil, cook over medium low, stirring often until the pancetta is a deep golden brown and crispy. Increase the heat to medium, add in five thinly sliced cloves of garlic, one teaspoon or two grams of red pepper flakes, saute until fragrant, about 30 seconds, then add one tablespoon or 26 grams of tomato paste, cook that down, stirring often until quite dark. If it burns a tiny bit, that's fine. Then deglaze with two shots of vodka, kidding, that's actually two tablespoons or 24 grams. Fun fact, the vodka is usually added to help emulsify the sauce, supposedly, don't know if that's true. Bring to a boil over medium high, then reduce the heat to low, cook that down for two minutes, then add a 14 ounce or 397 gram can of crushed San Marzano tomatoes. Turn the heat to medium, bring to a simmer, and cook until thickened about three to four minutes. Finally, add a half cup or 120 milliliters of heavy cream. Bring to a simmer and reduce for two to four minutes or until slightly thickened. Cut off the heat and season to taste with salt and pepper. So, top your pizza with your vodka sauce. A little bit of grated low moisture mozzarella, this is obviously a more American style pizza, if that's not evident. Yes, I'm breaking rules here. Sorry to the Italians. Lots of thick sliced peppy boys. You gotta respect the peppy cups. Pop into your oven, bake beautifully, marvel at its stunning gorgeousness. And let's see if this bad boy was the most worth it of them all. It's pizza party time. I feel like I'm at a little kid's birthday party. If that little kid had culinary excellence in his brain, which he doesn't. Maybe they do, I don't know. Point is, more effort, but is it actually worth it? It's in my mouth. It's salty, it's rich. It's a little creamy from the vodka sauce, a little spicy. Pepperoni, just a little right up there on the tip of the tongue. This perfect pepperoni pizza, it doesn't get any less effortless and this good than this. P.
period. My personal choice would be the middle point because that was my favorite flavor, but it doesn't matter. You choose whichever one you want. You want to go the easiest way? Great. You want to go the hardest way? Great. Either way, it's going to be the easiest, best pizza that you ever make. Thanks for watching and thank you to Maiden for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out their stainless collection. I'm a big fan and Maiden's other cookware in the link in the description to save on your order. So with that being said, I love you. Goodbye.